Two weeks ahead of European elections, Germany's far-right alternative for Deutschland, or AFD, has been expelled from the far-right identity and democracy grouping at the European Parliament. Now, this follows a series of scandals, largely centering around the party's lead candidate in the, in the election. Maximilian Kra was recently quoted as saying that not all members of Germany's SS, uh, of Nazi Germany's SS, were criminals. The AFD responded by banning him from making public appearances. Last month, the German police arrested one of his assistants on suspicion of espionage. Nikolai von Andaza heads the European division at the German Institute for International and Security Affairs. That's a think tank that advises the German government and parliament on foreign and security policy issues. Welcome to DW. Germany's domestic Good intelligence evening. agency has classified the AFD as a suspected extremist organisation. Now we have Europe's right-wingers finding them too distasteful as well. How are they still uh, allowed to continue to operate? Well, the German constitution sets a very high bar to ban parties from operating. But what we're certainly seeing here is that the AFD has become ever more radicalized. They started off as a basically liberal conservative alternative uh, to the CDU, CSU. And over the last 10 years, they have been ever more become ever more radical up to the point now that even most far right parties in Europe obviously don't seem to want to work with them anymore. And despite their questionable views, the AFD is polling at around uh, 15 to 17 percent. And they've previously been well ahead of each of the three parties that currently make up Germany's coalition government. So why do you think they are so popular here in Germany? Well, they've been quite successful in getting the protest vote against the German government. So there's quite a lot of dissatisfaction with this current government. Uh, they have used the topic of migration uh, to gain more votes. And they are particularly successful in eastern Germany, where there is a lot of dissatisfaction with the whole political class and where the AFD say we are the only ones against all the other established parties which could bring change. And that has made them so successful uh, that, they, as you're saying, they're polling around 15, 17 percent. Last year, they were even up to 20 or 22 percent. Maximilian Kra, the man at the center of this latest scandal, he's reported to have said that Hitler's paramilitary organization, the SS, were not all criminals. How much trouble could those comments get him into? I think it's not unusual anymore, we have to say that members of the AFD have tried to relativize uh, the Nazi past. Uh, Höcke, one of the leading members of the AFD, has also recently uh, been convicted at court for using a Nazi slogan. Um, and so I don't think this is a single element in the party, but rather a representation of where the AFD has moved. Um, and some people in Germany, I think, now rightly say it's a right-wing extremist party, no longer just a populist party. OK. Uh, Maximilian Kra is currently being investigated over suspicious links to Russia and China. Uh, what can you tell us about those suspicions? Well, that is also not so surprising. He has long been an advocate of China and Russia, also in the European Parliament. The suspic suspicion is there that uh, one of the members of his team has been spying for China. So the uh, German police raided his office in Brussels and uh, in Germany. And he has let go of that member of his teams. But it's pretty clear uh, that he has these close links and also in votes in the European Parliament. Whenever there was a vote, he voted against the majority for China or for Russia. Thank you for taking us through that so clearly. Nikolai von Andaza from the German Institute for International and Security Affairs. Thank you. All right, for more now, we want to go to our correspondent, Baron Tariget in Brussels. He's been following this story for us. So, Baron, why did the, the ID group, the parliamentary group there, why did they decide basically to kick out the, the German AFD party? 
The ID, the Identity and Democracy Group, is by all means the far, the most far-right group in the European Parliament we have, and they now say the AfD is too extreme, too radical for us. It seems to be a contradiction, but the ID says the recent uh, comments by uh, Maximilian Kra ab uh, about the SS that was crossing a line that was too much in a in a real uh, row, row of incidences in the last uh, weeks and. months. Months. So this is now the decision by the majority of uh, this group to expel all nine members of the AFD. But that doesn't mean uh, that the, the program of the ID group or these parties has changed. You have to see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. It's all... It uh, seems to be um, going with a plan of Georgia Meloni, the Italian prime minister, and Marine Le Pen, the opposition leader in France, both uh, in far-right parties. Uh, they want to form a more moderate group that would be able uh, actually to work also with the Christian Democrats uh, in the EP. Uh, and uh, the AFD would then be a hindrance to do that, so they decided actually to get rid uh, of these Germans uh, that are all uh, causing trouble right now. So, so the message here, it sounds like, based on, on what you're saying, is that for, for the European far right, Germany's version of the far right is simply too extreme. How big of a blow is it going to be then for the, the AFD? Yeah, the strategy of uh, Meloni and Le Pen is to form a, a much bigger, moderate appearing group, at least, in the European Parliament. Uh, and for the AFD, this is a severe blow because they, are, they uh, have lost their two lead candidates for the European elections and now they are kicked out and labelled as too extreme. If this has an impact on the voters, actually, in Germany, is not clear. Uh, the AfD is losing a little bit in the polls. It's now standing between 15 and 17. Uh, still the second largest um, party in uh, Germany when it comes to the European elections. And they can, can still send at least 15 deputies into the parliament. So they would also gain in these uh, elections. Um, so it's not quite clear how, how big this blow will be on a European level for the AfD. And but now they have to search for a new group, but the regrouping will only take place after the elections. DW's Bernd Regan with the latest in Brussels. Bernd, thank you. Well, DW's chief political editor, Michaela Kufner, spoke to Katarina Barley, the German Social Democrats leading candidate for the upcoming European elections. And this is what she said about the AFD's chances with the voters. It's difficult to say now because I've 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 been on a panel yesterday in, in Eastern Germany and uh, and Maximilian Kai was excluded by um, by the organisers from this panel because of what he had said about the SS. Um, so um, we won't see him anymore in the campaign. The number two is also under pressure because of his contacts uh, to Russia. So we don't know how the IFD can do an election campaign at all without putting up people who are obviously not trustworthy. I think it speaks for itself when it comes to this election. Marine Le Pen, who is in the farest right parliamentary group, we have two far right and this is the farest right, and she's extreme right too. For her, the German IFD is too extreme. So imagine that. Um, obviously, the German IFD is out of any sort of spectrum, um, which should be alarming for German voters. Does this make your life easier in these elections as a top candidate for the Social Democrats? Well, it reveals what the IFD is. Uh, it is a, a party where you can't trust hardly anyone um, because anything can pop up and where they also um, fight against each other. This is a, something that we should also consider. When it comes to the extremes, they fight against each other and you can, you can sort of transfer this to the European Union. Imagine Marine Le Pen being in government in France and the AfD being in government in Germany. Just imagine that. We would have conflict and, I say, war within some period of time. This is what extremists do. They fight also against each other. So peace is at stake uh, if you vote for extreme right. Do you mean a physical war? 
I mean, well, have a look at what the, the peace government said towards Germany. Listen to what uh, Marine Le Pen says towards Germany all the time. Of course, this will not result in, in, in war within a year, but this is the sort of conflict that builds up that we've seen for centuries in this con on this continent. So if you give the power to the extreme right, they are nationalists. And nationalists, in the end, they, they fight against each other. That's what nationalists do and have always done. Katharina Bali, thank you very much.